guys, this is Amy from Knit Collage and I am finally getting around to making a video about how my Penguano sweater was knit. I've gotten a bunch of questions about this on um, email, blogs, and Instagram and I thought I would dive into more the nitty gritty of it than just what I wrote in my Ravelry post um, to really share kind of what my rationale and thinking was <laughs> in making this thing and I hope that it will inspire you to try it out because I feel like this sweater opened up this whole new world of knitting for me um, to really play and be challenged and try new things in my own knitting. So I hope that if you were thinking about doing it, you give it a go and really take it to a crazy place. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know this pattern, it's called the Penguano, it's by Stephen West. And one of the coolest things about it is the way he wrote it if you decide to knit it with a worsted weight yarn or a smaller um, weight yarn, it's going to be smaller. The whole thing is going to be smaller. So if you want it to be more like a real sweater, go that route and that'll be beautiful. If you want it to be more like a coat, more like a jacket, um, go for the bulky route. That's what I did. It's all chunky yarn and I love the way it turned out. I wear this a lot as a jacket in fall and spring, in early spring. And I wear it over this like kind of canvasy green, green, olive green military inspired jacket I have and I love it. Like I'm cozy, I'm warm and it really is a showstopper. So I love that about this thing. I never turned down an opportunity to wear it. I'll probably wear it at Rhinebeck again next year, second year in a row. <laughs> um, so, so, okay, so I want to talk about the yarns I've used in here. Some of them are knit collage yarns, which is my company, and most of them are stash yarns. I did buy some skeins for this. So, give you an idea of how the sweater is knit. This is the back. I'm looking at the back. You start off by knitting the back panel, and then you move on to the welts and knit around to the front, finish the front, and then you start with the other side. And then I believe you pick up stitches or these are live stitches and you knit the border and the sleeves as well. So there are a couple things that I kept consistent in this piece. Um, and if you want the exact pattern details, of course, go download that on Stephen West Ravelry page. Um, it's right there and I can link to it. Um, but there are a couple things I kept consistent. So I really went crazy on the back and played with yarn here, and I'm gonna talk more about that in a second. And in the front, you can see where the back kind of wraps around to the front. I've gone crazy on both front panels. So where I kept things consistent is I kept the collar and the bottom band the same. And I think that really ties it all together and makes it look a little, less totally crazy. So I chose places to use the same yarns to create a kind of color blocked look and make it feel a little less nuts. And I think that really helped bring it all together. It's a lot of the same colors. I went more neutral, whereas the body has uh, more pinks and pops of neon. And you know, so you can see some of the daisies in my yarns too. So I believe I used, um, I went to Gather here in Cambridge and bought a bunch of the yarns um, for this area and I can't remember what they are. The mustard I know is a Manos yarn that I loved and I got at a trade show and one of my favorites. And then I used the same yarn for the sleeves here and I mirrored um, the cuff edge, which I think is, it's just a knit edge. Um, to match my collar and my border. So you can see those are all the same colors. For the sleeves, I did the same color. So I've seen, I've seen penguanos where there are different color sleeves. Totally cool if you wanna go that route. Just kind of walking you through what I did. I kept the sleeves the same color and I matched them to this shoulder patch. Now, when you get to the shoulder patch, um, one thing I did, because my sweater is bulky, is I actually used two strands of yarn held together for this rectangular shoulder patch. And this is the only part of seaming you do in the entire pattern, which I really love. There's no seaming. So that's fantastic. Um, 
but so it's easy when you're going through the pattern to see what I'm talking about. There's this one little rectangle up top in either side. I kept it the same color as the sleeves. I just used two strands. And that is because I wanted the shoulders to be really strong to be able to hold the bulk of this sweater, which is heavy and it is like a jacket. So I would consider doing that if you're thinking about making a coat-like version like me. So the last thing I'll say about kind of keeping some things consistent and toned down in your penguano is the I-cord. So in Steven's original I-cord edge along the whole sweater edge, he did a striped I-cord and it looks really cool. But I thought it would look kind of crazy on mine. So what I did instead is I took two yarns and I held them together. It's that Mano's mustard yarn that I mentioned before I used um, in the collar and the cup that I really loved. And I used another colorful yarn, I don't remember which one. Um, so that kind of ties it into the body, but I kept it all the same. I felt like it was gonna look a little crazy if I went with the stripe, although the stripe is awesome. So that is, was my rationale. I kind of knew early on that I wanted the sleeves and the borders to match. And I think that really worked in this design. So I encourage you to do the same if you like the way this one turned out, but with your own colors. I guess the last thing I'll mention is the welts over here. You can see the welts, they were so much fun to knit. They're on either side of the back panel. And I did use the same colors for my um, welts. I used three different yarns. One is like sparkly, one is really rustic, and who knows what the third is. <laughs> um, so, that I kept consistent, which I actually really like the way that turned out as well. So diving into how I picked kind of what yarns to use of my own and how I mixed gauges, because I get that question a lot, like my yarn is really bulky, and how I mixed it with finer weight yarns. So really isn't rocket science or brain surgery. <laughs> what I did is I would only use my yarns in very, small places so two rows at the maximum and you can see throughout here um, where the bulky yarns are so the daisy chain yarn is here and i've just done it looks like i've done two rows there this is our sister yarn i've done two rows there this is daisy chain again that looks like one row and you can see in my sweater maybe you can't see but the gauges don't perfectly match up. It is a little wonky and lumpy bumpy. And so I'm cool with that. I kind of like the way it looks just off the needles. I'm not the biggest um, matching gauge nut or blocking nut. I really like it when things look handmade um, because that's part of the beauty for me. So um, if you look really closely or sideways at the sweater, you'll see it's kind of lumpy bumpy and more bumpy where you have these um, bigger gauges. But for the most part, I really tried to match it. I didn't use a ton of my yarn. I used it very sparingly. So I'm gonna show you some of the yarns I used. So this is the Spun Cloud yarn that I used in color Love Cloud. You can see it up here. Um, it has a tiny strand of silver Lurex, a tiny strand of gold Lurex, and it's got a really funky plied texture, super soft and lofty. So this one I think I used in this color and maybe ivory. And then I used Castaway. Now I don't see Castaway on this panel. I'll flip it around and see if I can find it on the other side. But this is a really fun um, core spun, hand spun yarn that has a lot of color and texture in it. So this is one of my favorites for the rustic feel see if we can find where I used that. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see actually, but I did use the white coconut sparkle right here. So you guys can see that. That's the white coconut sparkle color and that came out really pretty. The other yarns I used are Gypsy Garden. I can see Gypsy Garden right here, just one row. So that has a little flower in it. That's this yarn um, in a different colorway. 
And then the daisy chain yarn, which I don't have here with me right now, but you can see all these little daisies poking through. And the reason I picked this one is because the colors really matched with the theme I was going. It was a really soft um, pink with a lot of natural and ivory in it. So it really worked with the colors I was working with in my palette. And I always poke the flowers to the front of my work after I'm finished. So keep that in mind if you decide to use a yarn with trim like we sell. And I did use the daisy chain a lot and I think that helped tie the whole sweater together. The other yarns you can see are, um, this is sister yarn in oatmeal. So I have a sister yarn right here. This is one of my favorites because it also has this really beautiful texture, a rustic kind of texture that looks barely spun and thick and thin, soft, more durable, a little bit more durable than the spun cloud, a little more tightly spun than that. So this is a great one to use for this sweater as well. The other one I didn't use, which I thought would be fun to use is our wildflower yarn. So this is a cotton fabric yarn and it is printed. So this could be really fun to mix in as well. And I didn't do that. I don't think I have even thought of that um, yet, but I think this would have been a really fun one to think about putting in there. So the other yarns that I used, I think the back panel is really the best place to show. Um, the other yarns that I used are really just from my stash and I am a yarnaholic and have many yarns from back in the days of my free people days. I found a lot of crazy yarns and I, when I was making this, I just traveled with a giant garbage bag um, and would have this giant garbage bag of yarn on the couch with me. It was hysterical and no one could really sit there. It was, it was a scene. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, it really was random, but I tried to balance the colors. So I guess first things first, I would suggest you come up with some sort of color palette, like throw all your stash yarns together and see what you like. See if you want to pop up something um, and try and tie it together with, with one or two like base colors. So for me, it's really like the ivory, the gray, the natural colors with pale pink and pops of neon throughout. So I definitely recommend coming up with sort of like, what's your, what's your palette, what's your theme gonna be? And then starting to go into it. Now, what I did in all the sections that are thinner than my bulky yarns, you know, really I used, I have a couple of these, like I just used random stash yarns that I have and mm -hmm. I plied them together. So I would use two or three or four ends of a yarn together to match the bulky weight of my yarns. And I just tried to match it as best I could. And the cool thing about this is once you get going, you'll realize that you really like the way certain yarns look together, so you'll repeat them again. And that is what I did. One of the things I loved doing in this sweater though is really mixing textures. So I added a lot of fuzzy yarns in and I love the way that turned out. So you can see at the bottom here, this is a very fuzzy mohair yarn, um, little mohair in here. I had some really cool sparkly, mohair, um, I have no idea where it was from, but I used that a fair amount. So I love the way this looks like a mix of colors, but also texture. So I would encourage you to really like go nuts. It stinks weaving in all the ends, but it is so worth it in the end. Um, just wanted to show you the way the side seams are done as well. All right, it's not really a side seam because it's all connected and it's all, um, you really are only seaming that top part, like I mentioned, but the side seams have these little, there's this little like vertical panel on the underarm. And in this section, I did use a little bit more of my yarn. You can see the daisy chain is like five or six rows here. Um, and I thought that looked really cute that way as well. So you could consider doing something like that. Let's see, yeah, this one has a little bit of that as well on that side. And as I got to the front, I think, you know, I didn't really think about them matching at all. I just used a lot of those same marling combinations that I had um, kind of discovered on the back panel because you start with the back panel. So I, I sort of discovered as I was going which combinations I really liked. 
and I try to just keep it balanced between neutrals and neons and pale pinks and so that was really it and I think really the beauty of it was this feeling of painting with yarn I felt like I got to just go nuts and make it this crazy insane thing I didn't realize it was going to be when I started it the person that inspired me um, was over at Make One Yarn Co. in California, and hers is gorgeous but totally different than mine, and it's funny to think that that's the, that's the one that inspired me, and I had no idea it was going to take on this, um, this kind of crazy sweater feeling. <laughs> so that is it for my notes on this sweater and how I knit it. Um, if you do have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me. Again, the yarns I used on mine were Castaway Knit Collage, Spun Cloud, Sister, Daisy Chain. I did have a row of Gypsy Garden mixed in there, um, but really very random, and you'll use very little of them throughout the whole sweater, and mostly use your stash if you're a yarn addict like me. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for following and tuning in. Take care, bye.